there are three broad classes of of function, uh, families of function. I'm not saying like this or that is the goal. I'm saying these are families of function. There is supervised learning, reinforcement learning, and unsupervised learning. And these are different families of how I can give goals to the machine, right? So I give the goal of like going to Rome. And then again, that's, that's one goal. And there are different ways I can achieve that. I could go... Uh, I could go by airplane, I could go by ship, or I could, you know, I could be myself there. So these are different uh, families of ways of helping to achieve a, a certain goal. And, and the, the goals also matter, it differ in these different, that's why my analogy with the Rome breaks down, they differ in the, the, the way, the kind of goals. Okay, maybe I just uh, tell you about the difference. So supervised learning um, uh, gives you a classification. It learns by giving rewards or losses towards working with pre-established classifications. Reinforcement learning goes with an objective and unsupervised learning goes with a pattern. It is still, even though it's called unsupervised, it still uh, gives a goal. So let me just maybe just walk through the three of them and, and that, that makes it clearer instead of having um, empty definitions here. So. Supervised learning is maybe the most intuitive and a, a lot of machine learning nowadays is supervised learning. So if, 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 if social media recognizes images and recognizes your relatives, all of that is supervised machine learning. So, and, and this is also how a child usually works. Like we humans, we work a lot. We learn a lot with supervised, supervised learning. So if you want to, for example, if you want to teach a child what's the difference between a car and a motorcycle, what do you do? I mean, the parent doesn't come up with a recipe book and say like, here's, here's, this, here's the rule book. A car has four wheels. A motorcycle is two wheels. A car, but what if a car is three wheels? Well, what if a truck, like, you know, it, this doesn't really work. What we do, I mean, we teach a child difference between a car and a motorcycle. We just train it by showing it examples. And that's what we do the machine. We show the machine this thing here and we say, that's a car. Then we show the machine this thing here and we say, well, that's a motorcycle. And then we show it this thing here and say, well, it is a car. And then we say, well, this here is a motorcycle. And then we show the machine this one here and it's supervised learning. So we define what that thing is. And I think most of us would agree on that this is a motorcycle, right? Now, I think we would say that's a motorcycle. So the machine would learn that this is a motorcycle now, even so it has three wheels. But what is this? Well, this also has three wheels. But I think most of us would agree that this is a car. Funny, huh? Yeah, but you know, so the machine would then learn that this is a car. And then this one here, well, that's a bad mobile. <laughs> but you get the drift, right? So we supervise, we train the machine. And then you learn the machine to sort things into boxes. Basically, that's it. That's supervised learning. Now, what is reinforcement learning? A lot of, uh, a lot of other machine learning today is reinforcement learning. And reinforcement learning, I basically, I give the machine some kind of landscape and then I give it a goal and it explores itself how to navigate that landscape. It explores this environment, this landscape, and I give it rewards or punishments, so reward function or loss function for achieving a certain goal. So for example, this is a famous example here uh, of, uh, of DeepMind. This is, you remember this game, Atari game? I think I played it as a kid. And they basically, what they gave the machine at the beginning is just, you know, just the, the environment, just the landscape. They gave the machine the ability to recognize pixels. And then they told the machine, well, sometimes you get points. And the machine didn't even know what it was doing. It could move this arm, but it didn't even know what it did when it moved this arm. It just could recognize pixels. Uh, but then when it realized like, oh, I get points, that's a good thing. I get rewarded or I get punished for not getting points. It started to adjust its strategy. Now for the first hundred runs, it was, it was horrible. It didn't really know what it was doing. It was just like walking around the landscape, bumping against things. Then after about 200 training episodes, after two hours, it was better than any human. It would never, it would never miss the ball. Uh, it, like humans will eventually miss the ball. After, after two hours, it was, it was more precise than any human. Then after, six, uh, after four hours, 600 episodes, something very interesting happened. It became innovative. It realized that if it made a tunnel and tunneled the, the little ball on top, it would rattle down all the points. And from then on, it basically solved the game. The game became very boring. 
because the machine immediately went to make this tunnel and rattle things down. Look, me as a kid, I probably played that game longer than four hours. I, I, I'm not sure if I had ever discovered that kind of trick. Right? So the machine really, it becomes innovative. It finds new solutions. Now that's a far cry from you know, solving the problems of, you know, the, the big problems we have in the world of crime and poverty and, and global warming and so forth. But, you know, that's the idea. It looks for innovative, innovative solutions. Now, we can then also fine tune it because we just say there's the goal, right? There's the goal of like, I want you to go to Rome, but I want you to go to Rome, not in like in a safe way or in an energy efficient way. And so that's where this important term comes in, RLHF, reinforcement learning from human feedback. And people say in the industry, people say that very fast, it, it's RLHF, you think like almost it's a word. <laughs> so RLHF uh, is then when we fine tune the reinforcement learning, when we say, good, you made this point, but now you know what, this tunneling trick is not prohibited, or it's only prohibited like you know, once in an hour or something like that. And you, you kind of like, you, you fine tune it. And many of the very successful um, technologies, we already talked about this technology, uh, which was the, the fastest diffusing technology that we ever had, uh, has a lot of RHF. So uh, a, a model language, a chatbot, for example, that you can ask for advice, uh, gets fine tuned by humans. So these goals are given, then humans fine tune it. For example, you could ask ChatGPT how to set up a perfect crime. Now, should ChatGPT really tell you all the things about how to set up a perfect crime? So RLHF is used in order to say like, okay, you say you wanna to go to Rome, but you know, go in there in, uh, in an acceptable way. We align it in the technical term, and we will talk much more about that at the end of the specialization when we talk about strategies and policies. We align it, AI alignment with the human values. So that's the second part, it's reinforcement learning. And the third one, a little bit more crazy. It's called unsupervised learning. So they say it's completely unsupervised. It's not. There's still a supervision. And the supervision is that I give it the mathematical family of what to optimize in. So uh, I have here my observation of reality. I have my data. So that's my data input. And now I give them a certain class. I give the machine a certain class of what to do. For example, I could say, give me a sparse representation of all these data points. And the machine says, well, these two data points are the ones that actually best represent what you had here, right? You had this, and then I say, like, if you want to really break it down to only two, I mean, this, now I learned, the machine learned, that this is the sparsest representation of this reality. I could also say, you know, give me a low dimensional representation. And it says, okay, now actually, you know, it comes down to like, like three big dots. Or I can say, give me an independent representation. Then it looks for the orthogonal vectors, I mean, you heard about that. So, and then it's just like, well, the, so if I tell the machine to optimize this way, look for patterns. So basically what unsupervised machine learning does is it looks for patterns in the data. And the family of pattern it looks for matters. And that's still given by the researcher. It matters if you say like use a Markov model for machine learning or use a neural net the machine will produce something something different. So still, you are still giving it the goal. Okay, we have to talk more about that, but basically what I wanted to tell you, so with regard to the goal, and I'll tell you this or that goal, I tell you there are three big families of goals, supervised learning, reinforcement learning, and unsupervised learning. And here, you can pause the video and read through it, please. These are some different definitions. So basically in supervised learning, the machine learns an existing classification, something that we know and we want to automate, difference between cars and motorcycles, and we just, the machine learns to put things into buckets under our supervision. Reinforcement learning, we give the machine just an objective, a goal. We say gain points or whatever, make the world a better place and then give good advice. But then the machine will optimize for that in the landscape and we might want to fine tune that. That's when we give human feedback in order to fine tune the goal. So make sure there are no unintended consequences when the machine implements a goal. And then unsupervised learning, where the machine basically, it's a data mimicry. It's a mimicry of the mathematical representation. So I have some kind of mathematical representation, and that can be a neural net or a Markov model, uh, and then, or a regression. 
And then I say, you know, from this regression versus the Markov model, you can, you, you try to fit the data best you can within the, in the parameters of this, of this family of model. You try to mimic the data in order to fit a pattern. But I still give it a goal. I still give it the kind of pattern I want to optimize for. I can optimize for a line or for a curve. Now that matters, right? So you try to mimic the mathematical representation of it and uh, try to mimic a, a pattern. Now, again, also here, it's important that you kind of like, you know, at the end, you fine tune it to make sure there are no unintended uh, consequences.